Welcome everyone. Welcome to our Clement Calling. It is our first one this year, so if I haven't seen you, Happy New Year. And I hope to see you again at the church now that restrictions are a wee bit eased and hopefully our Omicron wave is behind us. So this is Clement Calling for Friday, 4th of February 2022. My name is Miriam Murphy. I'm the Families and Young People's Ministry Coordinator here at Claremont. The Bible says, Blessed is the one who studies God's word day and night. This is in Psalm 1. And also the Bible says that encourage each other daily. So in our Claremont calling today, we are looking at different people. Different people are going to give their examples how they study God's word in their own time. Hopefully it will encourage you to maybe try out some of these methods that are innovative or new or you haven't thought of thought out before um, in the coming weeks. As I said, there will be another claim on calling um, in a few weeks time. So watch out for it for more encouragement. Hello, my name is Anna Weir and I'm a member and elder in Claremont Parish Church. I've been asked to say a little bit about encouraging folk to, to read the Bibles day by day. Now, I have to be very honest and say, yes, there's sometimes I feel as if I'm doing really well reading my Bible every day and trying to study it. Other times, things seem to get in the way, you get too busy, and it's much more difficult than I know I could do a lot better. When I started being interested in reading my Bible, then I used Bible reading notes, which are readily available, things like Every Day with Jesus and uh, Daily Bread. Uh, and they do help to keep keep you keep you going. Uh, sometimes too, if Gordon is preaching or the the, the Sunday service is preaching through uh, a book of the Bible, I, then I decide to read the whole book rather than just the, the passages that are there for the Sunday morning, and that that's helpful too. Um, if you're only just starting to get into reading your Bible and wondering where's the best place to start, I would say read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Uh, it gets you familiar with who Jesus was, what he did, how he coped with people, both people who needed his help and people who criticised him. Um, and that's, I'd read them again and again. Uh, get to, to really know Jesus and that and that's a very good, good help. Uh, Sometimes too you can sign up to daily Bible verses on uh, on email and that's a help to, to get into to things and become a wee bit more familiar with some of some of the, the verses. But the one thing to, to do is don't give up. Um, make a start. If you miss a couple of days, don't fret about it, just start again. So I hope I've encouraged you a little bit. And I hope that you manage to, to start your Bible readings. So thanks very much for listening and take care and God bless. Bye bye. So hi, I'm Martin Grant. I'm a member here at Claremont and I'm normally involved in the various technical things that go into uh, what we put out online and on the Sunday morning services. So for me, when it comes to reading the Bible, I normally end up reading whatever passage is going out on the Sunday morning because I'll have been putting the words together. And I find from that, that say we've read an excerpt from a particular chapter, after the, the service on a Sunday, I'll end up going back and maybe reading a bit either side. So if we have just read a few verses out of a chapter, is actually going back and reading the whole chapter uh, to see what else has been going on. And similarly, uh, maybe more so when we've been tying in with the, the the Sunday services or tying in with a focus group series, where we've maybe read part of, say, chapter one of a particular book one week, and then the next week it's chapter four, say we've moved on to, is actually then taking that time in between uh, to read chapters two and three, see, see what else has, has happened in between. And I normally just read that either on my phone or on my laptop using Bible Gateway. And certainly the what I find really helpful doing, doing it that way is quite often at the focus group series when, when we've when we've met, that there's sometimes as well as being able to discuss it with people and get maybe everyone sometimes picks up on, on different things in a verse, which I think is really quite useful. 
Um, I found that in a lot of the discussions we've had, but also sometimes there might be a particular verse that, that you maybe just don't quite fully know what it's getting at. And certainly using Bible Gateway for me, being able to flick between the, the different translations easily enough, you might find one that actually says it in a slightly um, maybe more understandable or, or a more tangible way. But, but certainly for me, um, my Bible reading is pretty well tied in with what we are reading on a Sunday and I think as well it, it can be quite good not only have I probably read it as I've put the words together you're then hearing it again on the on the Sunday morning and then um, I don't know I guess for me I think back to like when I was studying at university you're kind of doing everything that you can to to retain what you've heard what you've read so kind of having that two-step kind of works better for me so that you can pick up on more things in the sermon and even afterwards going back that if there has been a particularly poignant point or going back to the verse you can you can go back and reflect on it and you might maybe pick up on other things uh, that you wouldn't have otherwise. Hi there my name is Morag and I like to use the Bible in my Kindle just because it's nice and compact and um, handy and you don't get any tattered pages because I don't like tattered pages. Uh, although this Kindle is now 10 years old, it's probably very out of date and you can see it's getting a bit shabby on the case here just from daily use. But that's what I like to, that's where I like my Bible to be in the mornings. I also in this little case I have a notebook in case I want to jot anything down. I have my daily devotional book which um, helps me find my Bible reading and my reflection for the day. And I also have a copy of the Claremont Prayer Diary, um, which focuses my prayer every day. So I take all of them together, they're really handy. I take them to my quiet place and that's how I like to start my day. Good day to all my friends at Claremont Parish Church and also to everyone that is watching this. Um, I am Lisette Hernandez, and for my daily Bible reading, I use the app Lectio 365. This app is uh, written by Pete Greg and his, his co-workers that write in the 24-7 prayer movement too. Um, I use this app because it helps me a lot. Uh, to do my daily activities. I'm doing this every morning. Um, I think the three main reasons to do that is because you engage with Lord's Word, because there is a Bible reading in the app. So you can read it every morning, a portion of the Bible, and then you reflect it through this Word. The second reason that I use this app is because you fix your eyes on Jesus and helps you to face anything that you are dealing in your life. Um, so that helps you if you are dealing with problems in your job, healthy problems, or anything that you're dealing. And, and fix your eyes in Jesus and his promises. The third reason that I use this app is also because you engage with your, your prayer. So there is a, a quiet moments, so you can be still in your place of reading and you can pray through this app. There is, there is a music in the background, so you can be still and just pray and focus in the person of our Lord. Also, this app has uh, many courses like the prayer course, we did this one with our minister Gordon Palmer during the pandemic and was very useful and very enriching uh, in your Christianity life. And also right now there is a course, I encourage to everybody to do it, is Be Still. And this course is basically focused just to be still in the presence of our Lord. Enrich your Christian life and focus on what is your will for your life. Thank you so much. Hi Martin. Hi Miriam. Do you want to tell us um, what you do for your Bible reading? Do you do it daily? 
Um, more or less every day. I'll not say I do it absolutely every day. Um, if I'm preparing a sermon, I sometimes work in the sermon rather than doing a Bible reading time. And if I've been at church twice on a Sunday, then I sometimes say, well, I've done Bible reading then. But um, most days, yes, it's every day. And what do you use for your Bible reading? Um, what I use for the Bible reading, I can actually show you. That's the easiest way to do it. Uh, I use the NIV Study Bible uh, for the Bible reading, uh, which has got lots of notes inside it with all the passages, um, which I look at, but I actually use commentaries as well. Okay, so that takes you a little bit of time, doesn't it? Maybe about 20, 25 minutes, something okay. like that, probably. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a Bible reading plan or how do you decide where in the Bible you're going to dive in? <laughs> um, basically, I work from the beginning to the end and then back to the beginning again, um, but flitting between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Okay. Is there a plan? So Genesis and Matthew together? Uh, I don't do them together. I'll do Genesis, Exodus, then maybe Matthew, and then back to... Um, Leviticus and so on. Um, wow. How long does it take you, or interest, to read it all through and then back again? Um, I also have times when I read through the Bible, mm -hmm. just in a one mm -hmm. Um And that usually takes a few months to get through, because I usually do about 10 chapters a day um, when I'm doing it. But uh, I don't do that terribly often, okay. you know, about once every few years. Okay. It's actually how I got into Bible reading in the first, oh, Bible commentaries in the first place. Um, because when I was you know, an older member of the BB, but not an officer at that time, I was out with two of the boys one time. Um, they were doing some badge work or something. And I thought I knew my Bible and I'd been going to church for a while. I was about 16, 17, as I say. And they happened to say that their project for the summer was to read the Bible from cover to cover. And I thought, how can I possibly stand up and take devotions or teach them about Jesus and I haven't done it? So that's what I did. I read the Bible from cover to cover, all straightforward reading until I came to Revelation. And I suddenly thought, I don't understand this. I need some help. So that's when I got into commentaries and looking up to see exactly what it all meant. And these days, I use Tom Wright's commentaries for the New Testament and John Golden Gay's commentaries for the Old Testament. Okay. That's what I'm working through just now, although I do use various other ones at times. What would you say to somebody who's never read the Bible really all the way through? Um, I think if they haven't read their Bible at all, they want to start with one of the Gospels. And as we do in Clement, um, Take a good look at Christmas time as a good starting point. I think all St. Luke's Gospels are a good one to start with, or Mark, because it's the shortest. Um, but I would say to somebody who's going to start it for the first time and read their way through it, that they want to be very clear that some of the Bible has got a lot of detail that would be of interest to the Israelites, but not particularly to us. Um, and some of it will be a bit confusing or complicated. I mean, I do know some people in Clement who say that there's actually no point in reading the Old Testament at all because they don't think it's actually of any particular value in the New Testament, particularly the Gospels, is all you need. But actually, one of the things I've realised from reading the commentaries is that sometimes you miss completely the point of what somebody is saying. I mean, just now I'm going through uh, Corinthians, and Paul at one point quotes one verse from the Psalms, but as Tom Wright says in the commentary, the point is that actually his listeners would know the whole of that psalm. And he's not really comment, quoting one verse, he's actually quoting the whole psalm at them or reminding them about it. And that's what you don't really get if you don't understand the, the background to it. Yeah, I actually do a Bible reading plan with Sophia right now as part of her homeschooling. And we read the Old Testament, one chapter in Old Testament and one just chapter New Testament side by side and also a psalm or a wisdom literature in the middle um, and I find it enormously enriching and um, getting the background so sometimes there are overlaps where yeah. just what I'm reading in Old Testament in the law 
is something that Jesus comments on or Paul comments on and suddenly you see the depth. So I definitely would say that knowing the Old Testament is so important for understanding the New Testament um, and that they, they, they really enrich each other. Well, thank you yeah. for our chat today, Martin, uh, and encouraging us to read our Bibles all the way through. Certainly, would do. Thank you. <laughs> Enjoying it. Okay, Anna, uh, would you want to tell us about your Bible reading habits? Yes. <clears throat> I have a Bible app on my telephone, and I use that. It has a verse for today, which I look at and read before I get up in the morning. And that helps me to sort of centre on um, just, you know, who I am as, as a person, a Christian, and that helps me to look at the day differently. Just that one verse. And then uh, later on, I do the Bible reading, which is a plan on my phone, and that it follows on with the verse sometimes. Other times it can just be a heading like, do you want more to know more about healing or uh, grace, things like that. Something you want to know more about, then you go on to the healing, the uh, four, four week uh, talk or reading and then listening. So you can either listen to it by a person reading it or you can uh, read the Bible verses that they give you Okay. And do you, you follow on from that Do you read it from your phone or do you read it on your own Bible in the paper Bible? I read it from my Bible Do you want to show us the app on your phone? Mm -hmm. So in the app there's just the Bible verse and the reading plan well, there's, the, there's the app. Okay. Oh, how did you get it on your phone, Anna? Um, last year, I had two befrienders, uh, two girls, and they were helping me get some more understanding on my phone and what it, what it, how it all worked. And I asked them if they could put an app on and they said, oh, yes, we can put an app on. So so the, I said, put a Bible app on for me. So that's how I got the Bible app, was through the befrienders. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Brilliant. That's amazing. Um, you were telling me earlier that sometimes you get personalized stories about the characters in the Bible. Yes, that's right. You get any of the uh, characters in the Bible, Old, Old Testament and New Testament, and they're really very interesting because it, it, it's as if they were telling you their life story, how they, uh, like Paul, what he was, where he was educated and how he grew up and how he was a uh, he was against the church and he, and all the, all just the personal things. But one of the best ones that I really enjoy enjoy is Peter. And I think it's because I saw a, a program on television, <clears throat> and uh, it was the the story of the of, of the fisherman about Peter. It was probably called the Big Fisherman or something like that. And he was depicted as a Glaswegian, so he had this rough accent, and he was like a a real work you know a real Glaswegian talk and I think that's why I like Peter I just think he's a Glaswegian not that I'm a Glaswegian but he um, so he interests me and <clears throat> he tells his stories and about the miracles and about the fish when they went out and when when Jesus said to him Peter go out into the middle of the lake put your nets down and you'll catch a fish and it's I have an, an imagination I imagine Peter looking at Jesus and saying who do you not maybe saying it but thinking it who do you think you are you're a preacher I'm a I'm a fisherman I know where the fish are <laughs> but uh, he goes out and he gets the fish you know the story <clears throat> but at the end uh, of his 
narrative about his life and he tells how he denied Jesus and in, in the man that's reading or, or playing the part he was weeping there was real tears down his, coming down his cheeks and he said why did you love me so? And that really touched me because I think, why does Jesus love me so? Um, so th this is the kind of thing that's on the app as well about Stephen being stoned and it's his story. Um, and Peter, Paul, and just all of the characters. And they're very interesting and there's things about it that you read, but somehow it becomes more real when you're actually looking at this person and hearing about his life, and it it's it just it you can use your imagination. I think you do when you read the Bible. You can still use, but I think it, even personal stories and personal thing is more meaningful. As I say that Peter, when he said that, it was just the tone of voice and the way he said when he, he was talking about denying him three times. And yet he said, why did you love me so? Mm -hmm. so Thank you. Thank you for sharing. That's amazing. You're welcome.